In my experience, Comic-Con isn't normally a hotbed for vintage rarities. I mean, a 25 piece, you can't go wrong. Yeah. It was in my collection for a long time, and I'm like, that's weird and cool. Still sealed. This year was a little bit different. That's gnarly. And that's 120, you said? 120. Okay. So it's an original press case. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there, we, we, I can put that in an envelope for you, too, if you want one. Okay. Um, any other horror ones in here do you know of? Uh, I think uh, there's the blob in there. Okay. Um, there's the relic, living, Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. And I think okay. those are the horror ones we have. Okay. Might have to look for that one real fast. The, uh, yeah, I think Return's somewhere in the middle. It's okay. Black which is that is right there. Not on. Oh, yeah. So right now that I know how to. Hey, Padfoot. Yes. On the notebook behind you, where it has the prices, can you tell me how much Return of the Living Dead press kit is? Yeah. It's on the one hand side. Uh, seventy-five. That one's seventy-five. Okay. If you want to do both, I can give you a deal for them both. Okay. What do you think on both? Uh, so. The one ninety-five. I could do them both for one seventy. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Of Very course. cool. 170. 170. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to idle a lot and I'm really glad you got them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where'd you find these at? Just like uh, an so estate we or got a massive collection of lobby cards from, uh -huh. I forget the gentleman's name, is like an estate. If there's other horror movies you're looking for, sure. let me know. I love stuff like I've that. Hundreds. So like cool. Like FedEx boxes. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you so much. This one later. Gotta get it though. Is it a Gordy? That is a Gordy. Do um, you have any room on these three? Team 81. You know, I'll, I'll take make it even 75. I think. Sure, that'll work. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, good luck to you. How much do you have on the two uh, Body Wars pieces? Yeah, in the corner. Uh, I don't. I don't think that they are complete. Okay. But if you wanted to pair, I would do twenty-five and twenty-five. Okay. And I know even incomplete, they're going for like thirty, thirty-five dollars on eBay right now. Right on. Did you want to take a look at them? Yeah, yeah. Let me see how much they got in them. I sold six sealed pieces of mighty man. Oh wow. Mighty Max is getting hot. Oh yeah. I sold sealed uh, Steve Scorpion for two hundred ninety. There you go. Right on. So I, they're missing their... It's got, missing it's the, got the guys. It's only missing the missiles. So. Okay. I mean, at 25 apiece, you can't go wrong. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I never see these things. I'll take them. Cool. There you go, my friend. Right on. How much is this one? Yeah, what do you got in the monster ball, though? Where are... I'll do 50. I got 75. I'll do 50. 15. Bucks. They're getting tough. Yeah. I get 50 bucks for loops. Give me 50. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, man. So that was your 50. Let me get you another 50. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you another bag, too. I'm going to keep seeing stuff now, I think. Do your thing, brother. Do your thing. There's you, man. Thank you, you so much. We got on that guy. I could do 75. Okay. I got 100. These are like. These are supposed to be like uh, the, back in the 60s, early 70s. It was like mm -hmm. a rip off of Batman. They did Super Bat. So they couldn't put any likings like Batman. Yeah. But technically, it's supposed to be like. It's kind of a knockoff, sure. I, mean, yeah. oh, it, it, I love knockoffs. I had two of those for the longest time loose. And I'm like, man, I have to get on a card. Uh -huh. So the loose one, I get 75 for the loose yeah. ones. So when I got them on a the card, I got three at one time on a card. Mm -hmm. the shows and everybody was like, that's so what's what it looks like. It's so cool on a card. I like the card. Yeah. 
80. 80 on the silky. Quick question. Yep. If I bought all the Mad Balls and all the carded Ghostbusters right there, would there be any room there, you think? You know what? I'm going to go grab the guy that can make that uh, deal with you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I'm using this. Okay. Instead of totaling all these up, sure, because sure. Way, that's closer to like $800. Right. So I'll do, do that. $371 for the Ghostbusters and that. $800 even. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Thanks, man. None of these are broke on the back. It's so hard to find them where, where they're not just like sticking to the out. Or like, sticking or yeah, just melting on deteriorating, the Deteriorating, yeah. check all the backs out, but there's no deterioration, yeah. no, which is crazy because the foam has to be. Oh, I, I mean, I have a collection of these and, and nine out of 10 are awful looking. So really? Yeah, so. It's just like tennis shoes. You can, mm -hmm. if, if you don't wear them, that foam right. just disintegrates. Exactly. Like the Star Wars foam. <laughs> Real quick too, what's the deal with the, uh, ooze in there still sealed wow that's cool i'll think about that one that's really cool thank <laughs> you so much i thought about you know i've seen them graded and stuff i'm like oh, if i grade it i'm gonna keep it myself <laughs> seven eight cool we're set i appreciate the deal man thank you hey, thank you so you know there's also a magazine about quest yeah, cool so now that we already did the transaction. Well, they, okay, they pre-ordered like three years ago. And then they finally came out in the last year. So. What are those? Those are Mexican bootlegs. Okay. Um, that I bought from a guy. He, um, he buys a lot in Mexico and uh -huh. then he also makes things in Mexico. Um, so they are... If you look too, they have Luchador wrestling band uh -huh. uh, and then pads and stuff. But yeah, uh, kind of handmade Squishy head. Ed. That's awesome. Just weird and different stuff. Yeah. It was in my collection for a long time and I'm like, that's weird and cool. So there's him and then I'll show you Wolfman too. Since it's all bootleg stuff, there's not really date yeah. stamps, there's not really years, you know. Okay. And a lot of Mexico stuff is blow mold, so it's hollow sure. on the inside, right. you know, so. Those are cool, are they 90 a piece? Yeah. What'd you do on those two plus half court over there? Plus what? Um, half court. Half court. Oh, over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, ninety on them, right? Yeah. So two seventy for all three. So about two fifty for all. Sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah, work. Two fifty. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Where's your store at? Uh, Michigan. Michigan. Okay. We've got we've got more weird. We carry yeah. Sufubi vinyl oh, nice. and Godzilla and all sorts of cool stuff. So all the old comic stuff, all the old the newer toys and older toys, and then yeah. Okay. Weird stuff is kind of our love, so. I love it, man. There's those, and then okay. um, if you want to see the pretty lady with the red hair, she can um, get you in that place. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you know you. what? I think I want to buy your exclusive, too. That's pretty cool. These things are just popped off. They'll pop right back in. Sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to ask. So we made it back to the showroom. In my experience, Comic-Con isn't normally a hotbed for vintage rarities. This year was a little bit different. Of course, I'm talking about Indiana Comic-Con. Not really sure how they are across the rest of the country. I sat up and sold there last year. This year, I just kind of wanted to look around, see if I could find anything to maybe fill in some collecting gaps here and there. And I'm pretty happy with some of the harder to find pieces I was able to walk away with. I went pretty heavy on the gross out and horror and horror adjacent. And in my eyes, that's a pretty successful day. So real quick, let's take a look at everything.
So if we take it booth by booth, my first and probably strangest pickup of the day would be this signed Crybaby DVD. The reason I got this is because there was a time in my youth where I was obsessed with this movie. It made me a Johnny Depp fan back then. It got me into things like 21 Jump Street and then Edward Scissorhands and all that stuff. So even though those times have changed, it was a pure nostalgia grab. I believe the tag said it was signed by Johnny Depp, but on closer inspection, I'm pretty sure that's John Waters' signature. Doesn't make it uh, any less cool or any more cool in my opinion, but it definitely changes things. Uh, not really why I grabbed it, but that's where we are with this one. At that same booth, I did bundle in this Gordy Rack Toys TMNT flash gun. I have a whole display of those down there, so that'll fit in nicely because I do not have this one. And then I kind of got this set of Elvira trading cards thrown in for free. I'm not really sure what these cards are from. They just say Elvira, Mistress of the Dark on the back. There's no dates or anything, but they were basically free. So if you know what this set is from, definitely let me know. At another booth, something instantly caught my attention. A while back when I was checking out the Battle Babies collection, my friend Brad kind of schooled me on these Body Wars toys. I've been on the hunt for them ever since. This is the first time I came across any. We have two, they are incomplete, but we do have the skull guy here. He's missing the missile inside there. And then we have the brain also does not have a missile. They might have had some more little guys with them too. Still kind of learning about these, but you just never see them. So the first time I saw two, picked them up. I think 25 a piece was a great deal because I've seen the figures alone sell for 20 or more and they display just fine like this. As I was going to pay for the Body Wars, I saw another item I've been on the hunt for. This is an Ilko Monster Ball. This is the Wolfman version. There were a few different ones like the Mummy, Dracula. We have Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster down there. Kind of a cool take on a Mad Balls knockoff. In fact, I discovered these a few months ago when I was searching for Mad Balls knockoffs. Uh, something about these popped up. Didn't know if I'd ever find one. A lot of times the packaging is pretty messed up on them. This one's pretty great in all honesty. It's got a little creasing on it, but that displays wonderfully. It was 50 bucks, I think that's about right. In this condition, could be worth a little more, but I'm just happy to have finally found one. And the last item I picked up from that booth is a 1966 Batman knockoff called a Super Bat. It's this weird little troll looking figure, kind of in a Batman style costume with a bat board. Super sweet basic knockoff artwork on the back tells the tricks he can do, like the boss or the wheelie, the flyaway, even the hot dogger, the head dip, the kamikaze, and of course, the butt breaker. Seems like a pretty tough piece to find, especially on the card like this. I did find one on Worth Point. I think it was like around 175 or 180, so to get this one for 75, I am super happy about that. I thought these were pretty great. They're old horror movie press kits. I mean, there was a big bucket full of press kits. I went for the horror ones. We have Friday the 13th and The Return of the Living Dead. I think when they sent these out, they might have had like a letter with them or something. These only have the pictures with the explanations of the pictures. I believe the Friday the 13th has eight different photographs, stills from the movie, and then they have these little papers that are explanations from Paramount Pictures. Uh, this one says, Harry Crosby wields a machete against an intruder that has entered his cabin in Sean S. Cunningham's Friday the 13th. If we look at the Return of the Living Dead, I believe this one has 13 photographs. Inside the folder here, it has uh, contact information for the movie company, in this case, Orion Pictures. But in a world of mass-produced modern horror action figures and stuff like that, I just think it's a really cool thing to come across. And being able to use the folders themselves as a display piece, I think that's pretty gnarly. The biggest buy of the day came from a booth where I saw a wall of real Ghostbusters monster carded figures. And then as I walked inside the booth, I saw a nice display of carded Mad Balls. One of my favorite toys in the entire world. I never see them in this kind of shape or this kind of quantity. I instantly knew that we were gonna be working out a deal here. Now what makes this even more special as a whole, as far as the Ghostbusters figures go, this is the entire set of the monster line on very, very nice cards with very nice bubbles. 
If you know anything about real Ghostbusters cards, they are generally in pretty rough condition. They're just so oversized, they got smashed a lot. These are just pretty crispy overall, and I'm always a sucker for the uh, Toys R Us clearance stickers and stuff like that. In fact, these were 50% off. The last full set of these I saw sell in this nice of condition sold for like 750 bucks, which is pretty close to what I paid for everything, so the deal was obviously there. For me, aside from maybe the uh, Ecto Glow Ghostbuster line, the monsters are probably my favorite. I'm pretty sure I have all of these loose, but could not resist the uh, minty carded set. Likewise, as far as the Mad Balls go, this is the entire set of Series 2. There are eight characters from Series 2. You can see them lined up all around Snake Bait right here. But we also have Swine Sucker, Bruise Brother, Wolf Breath, Freaky Fullback, Splitting Headache, Lock Lips, and of course Fist Face. Most of these, when you see them, they're going to have plenty of problems. They were made of foam, and that foam did not hold up even inside the packaging in a lot of cases. This is my current carded version of Swine Sucker. As you can see, compared to this crystal clear minty version here, uh, he did not hold up well over time. He is completely melting inside of that package. The package itself is in pretty good condition, but it just did not work. So believe me when I say finding an entire set like this in this sort of condition, pretty exciting. And much like the Ghostbusters, a great deal. The last complete set of Series 2 in good condition like this, I believe sold for somewhere around $600. So when you add it to the Ghostbusters, consider what I paid. We're looking pretty good here. And lastly, shockingly enough, the Mega Madball score may not have been my favorite find of the day. I was actually getting ready to pack it in, and uh, a couple of these fellas here caught my attention. This was a booth called Tardy's Collector's Corner. They're out of Michigan. Seems like a really cool store. Hopefully I can make it up there sometime. These are just some crazy bootleg monster figures, like wrestling bodies with uh, Wolfman's head and Frankenstein's monster's head. I don't know if the bodies were made at one time and the heads were made later just to be put on there. Don't know much about these at all, but that's kind of the magic with something like this. I think they're pretty intense though. They, they stand probably, I don't know, 16 inches tall or something. I just love everything about these things. Even where the paint's starting to chip off, you can see uh, Frankie's tattoo there on his chest popping right off. I thought 90 bucks a piece was a great deal. Bootlegs always throw me off. I, I never know what something like that's going to run. So 90 a piece, I was definitely comfortable with that. And then to get the uh, TMNT half court thrown in for 70 on top of that. He only has one accessory, but this one accessory here sometimes will run you maybe 40, 45 bucks on its own. So the entire figure for 70, definitely happy to add this one to the collection as well. And then as I was getting ready to leave their booth, I saw that they had this cool store exclusive, a uh, collaboration with hop toys hop stands for high on plastic this is a robot monster I, I think it said there were 50 made maybe it said hundred I think it was 50 but it's a Tardis collectors corner exclusive not vintage or anything but I thought it was pretty cool looking it's actually a pretty massive piece but it's dwarfed by the uh, monsters there I was happy to grab this in support of what seems like a really cool store again like I said Hope to visit there someday. That is all I got for you this time. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. But until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Love ya. Bye.